Well, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because UFC 400 is probably not going to happen until like 2032. Welcome in. UFC 300 Fight Week is upon us. This is our UFC 300 betting preview presented by DraftKings. John Anik alongside the future UFC Hall of Famer, Triple C, Henry Cejudo, and of course, our UFC betting analyst, Nick Kalikas. My man, Triple C, it's nice to see you, brother. Sun shining on your face. Crazy to think back to November of 1993 when all of this noise began, and now here we are. 300 numbered cards later UFC 300 beckons this weekend my man yeah absolutely crazy man to go back and think about since 1993 I mean 300 UFC events like pay-per-view events not, that's not just events pay-per-view events it's absolutely surreal how far and how long the sport has gone and I'm just I'm just got to be a part of it John you played a big role every step of the way. Nick, I'm curious what it's been like for you as a guy who lives in Las Vegas. I think a lot of us would hearken back to UFC 100 in July of 2009. I remember I was there covering it with ESPN MMA Live. And then you think about July 2016, UFC 200. Now, eight years later, it feels like we're in a totally different place than we were for UFC 200. It's truly amazing. I don't think from the gambling aspect, I've been handicapping fights since early 2000s, and I never would imagine we'd see where we are today, the point where everything is with the UFC being ultra popular and just the machine that they are right now. It's it's awesome to be a part of it all. And the gambling is honestly keeping up and it's competitive with other mainstream sports. That's how important MMA and UFC betting is today. There's no doubt a lot of bookmakers are loving all the UFC action. They're taking 40 plus Saturday nights a year. And of course, the DraftKings and UFC partnership launched in 2021. It's been all systems go ever since. And I've talked to a lot of fans, at least on the Internet, social media. They're going to bet all 13 fights this weekend. So to that end, let us get into the pageantry that is UFC 300. This show brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, where new customers can download the DK Sportsbook app, use code UFC, and claim $150 in bonus bets when you make your first bet of $5 or more. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. And of course, we're putting Triple C in the goddamn center of the three box there. Let's get into <laughs> the main event, Henry, if we could. For the undisputed light heavyweight championship, Alex Pededa is minus 130. Jamal Hill plus 110 as he comes back from that Achilles injury. About 73% of the money in the total bets placed thus far have been on Alex Pereira. How do you see the main event playing out, and do you see it as close as the betting line is, at least right now? Um, yeah, I, I, th I think the betting line is pretty is pretty straight on. I think if there's one person that really has to make that adjustment, every time I analyze a fight and I break a fight down, I try to see who was it that really has to make the adjustment. According to according to the power and the person with the power right now that's the most dangerous guy is, is it is Alex Pereira. So that means what is it that what is it that a guy like Jumbah is gonna have to do? Can he play the movement game? Can he play the distance game? Can he or could he go in there and go straight punches and go big right away? Because we saw in the past a guy like Alex Pereira does get hurt early, but if you allow him to get warm, you allow him to get better, he only starts getting better. We saw it against Israel Adesanya, and obviously Israel Adesanya did knock him out in their last outing. But that being said. The dude is a zombie. Are you talking about somebody that could really take a hit and then come back? And obviously, he does a really good job of utilizing that kick. And but the, but the only thing that I will say, John, people don't bring this up. Jamal is a southpaw. I right. mean, yeah. that, that right kick. That that that. There's two things you have to watch out with Alex Pereira. That's his right kick and his left hook. The rash, you can be okay. And every once in a while, he has that jumping knee where he could potentially knock you out. But those are the two arsenals that a guy like Alex Beta has. Now, Jamal Hill's going to have to play that plan B. He's going to have to dismantle him with movement, distance, and eventually when he goes in, he's going to have to take more risk. Yeah. Nick, will you have a wager on the fight even if you don't have one active right now? I will. And for me, it seems like it's a dog or pass situation. A lot of question marks surrounding this fight for sure. It should be a striker versus striker matchup. Both these guys like to bang. Both these guys have decent takedown defense. If there's a back pocket that you could utilize wrestling, though, it's on the hillside. I think he might try to mix things up a little bit more so. But of course, working with Glover, you know that Banana is going to be ready for anything that he brings to the table. So, But I do expect this to be a striker versus striker matchup. And let's not underestimate the hill power. Hill has a lot of knockout power in his own right, man. We've seen him put people to sleep left and right. So you have two dynamic strikers that really, if they land clean, it's anybody's fight. Henry, from a betting perspective, when you see Alex Pereira as a slight favorite, Jamal Hill is a slight underdog, forced to make a prediction. 
from a betting standpoint, who do you like Saturday night? Yeah, well, I'm gonna give the edge more likely to to the you know to the to the champ to the champ because when you hear guys like Jamal Hill saying, "Oh, I'm not even gonna wrestle. I'm not gonna do that," I believe him. And the thing is, if if you if you haven't wrestled before, or if you, if you haven't done your whole training camp with wrestling, it's different. I tell you that right. even as a wrestler, like you have to embrace yourself and really get into this six month process of just doing nothing but wrestling and really adding that. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm going to wrestle," and it's going to happen in the fight. It's not true. Right. So for that reason, John, I like Jamal Hill. I, I really do. I think I think if there's any way he could potentially get it done, he gets it done at the beginning of the first or the beginning of the second. But other than that, that fight that fight continues to keep going just on that Alex Pereira train. So for that reason, the edge, I ain't trying to jump on nobody's bandwagon, right. but I got to give it to Alex Pereira. All right, let's get to the co-headliner because you know Zhang Wei Li exceedingly well. And thus far, the most total bets on DraftKings Sportsbook have come in on Zhang Wei Li. She's a minus 500 favorite here against her Chinese countrywoman, Yan Xiaonan, who is the plus 380 underdog right now. What are your thoughts on this as a pressure spot for an athlete that you know all too well, Henry and John? Wayne? Yeah, no, for sure, man. By the way, I just want to compliment you on your Chinese, uh, John. Ni hao, ni hao, mao, de ni. No, I, I've had the pleasure and the honor to work with Wei Li. And, you know, every time she 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 has a fight coming up, she'll always like, be like hey, Henry, what do you think? So you always like like a lot of these guys who have been, had the ability to kind of coach, they've always hit me up right before the fight. Like, hey, what do you think about this game plan? What do you think? What, what would you add? What would you take away? And I think with Zhang Wei Li, she's such a student of the game. She reminds me of different stylistically, but she reminds me of a lot like Habib Nurmagomedov, Madoff, where they just eat, sleep, train. Every every conversation is just about fighting. Her her distance has gone better. Her uh, her diversity of using her wrestling as she did against Amanda Lane where you're thinking the way he's going to turn around and strike to eventually go in there and go for the takedowns. I mean, she's added a lot of new tactics to her game and she's only getting better, John. I believe, you know, with, with Jan being in there, obviously she's, she's a newcomer, but she's also fighting for that UFC championship. And a lot of guys, when they fight for the championship for their first time, they're wide-eyed. Yeah, you know, but yeah. does she have that chip on her shoulder? If she does yeah. have have that chip on her shoulder, it could it could work for her. But I just think Zhang Wei Li in every area is just a little too much. Yeah. No, I think that's a great assessment as usual out of Henry Cejudo. I think Yan Xiaonan has all of that championship hunger and that proverbial chip on her shoulder, Nick. Plus 380 right now. Do you see any value whatsoever on the Chinese challenger Yan Xiaonan? Well, let me ask Henry this. Is she training with you for this camp? Because I think a lot of inquiring minds would like to know that. Did she have a camp with you this time? <laughs> no, no, she didn't. No, she, she didn't train for me in this camp, no. Okay. Well, you know what? That makes a little bit of an impact because there's a lot of respect to Cejudo, a lot of respect to his training because he's obviously shown what he's capable of doing and getting fighters to the next level. So I think yeah, now that we said that, that might impact the market a little bit. Not in a major way, but a small way. And I do think there's value on Yang. We're talking about pricing here. I'm not going to argue that Zhang is not a tremendous fighter. She's special. Everything that Henry said is 100% accurate. But you are facing a hungry challenger, like you guys said. And Yang, if she can st- stuff the takedowns, she's going to be a threat on the feet. She's got nasty power. She's got that confidence. She's got that swag. She's fought a lot of decent competition as of late, too. She's earned this title shot. So for yeah. me, it's about price points. And I can't lay almost five to one. On yeah. Zhang right now, I think it, you have to put something on the dog or kind of leave it alone. Yeah. Also, you got to remember, Parlay City, dude, everybody's going to be on that side, you know, throwing oh, yeah. Zhang into parlays. So yeah. it's never a bad thing to kind of go against the grain there either. Yeah, Jean Wei Li will probably be up to minus 600 by the time we get off the air. So that's the picture on the strawweight championship fight. And I do have to say, in closing on that, you got to feel like Jean Wei Li wants this one in the worst way. I mean, she's had a lot of big wins. You want to, you know, check two-time UFC strawweight champion. You don't want to lose to your countrywoman, Yan Xiaonan. We'll see how it goes in the co-headliner this weekend. All right, Triple C, featured bout for the BMF title. Drum roll, please. Justin Gaethje, minus 175. Max Holloway is plus 145. This fight is taken two ways action right now as expected but at one point Gaethje was north of minus 200 now down to minus 175 Henry if if you do like Justin Gaethje price is getting sweeter by the minute your thoughts on this one and I like them both and I like them both but there's one fight that maybe you might want to go for the underdog it is this little Max Holloway why is because the dude has a gas tank too the dude has durability the dude has volume to his fight style but he's also going up against a guy like 
Justin Gaethje, a risk taker, a guy who likes to throw out the kitchen seek, a guy who kicks the legs. And there's one thing where I feel like Gaethje is really going to attack. You know what he's going to do. He's going to kick the leg. He's going to kick the leg. He's going to kick the leg. And then eventually he's going to start letting the hands go. And who knows? He may be seeing high kicks to the head too. Justin Gaethje has only gotten better. And not just that. If you watch his, last, his prior fight, other than fighting Poirier against Michael Chandler, he brought some of that folk star wrestling in. And I think what that matters, I think there's a, there's a, there's a couple tricks that a guy like Justin Gaethje should have. It's his wrestling and obviously his leg kicks. But I think the biggest surprise that he could give people is going to be the wrestling. But that being said, he's also a knucklehead. He's also uh, yeah. when, when, when he's in there, he's, he's going to do whatever it is that Justin Gaethje wants to do. If I'm in Max Holloway's shoe, you know what I'm thinking? I'm going to read a little bit of I'm, I'm going to look into a little bit of what Khabib did. Pressure him, take away that kick, and make a fight backwards. And who knows, maybe look for some of that wrestling. Because remember, you have to keep in mind too, Holloway could wrestle as well. And as we saw a guy like Justin Gaethje against uh, Charles Oliveira, he was kind of like a turtle on his back. And that's yeah. one thing. Yeah. If I am Holloway, I am looking to expose. But, John, that being said, I just think the vicious power of Justin Gaethje and the fact that he's a risk taker, I think I, I got to go with Justin Gaethje. I didn't think there was a way for me to actually get more excited for Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, and that Triple C breakdown actually got me more excited for the fight. Nick Kalikas, your thoughts on this matchup that seemingly is taking action on both sides, at least right now? As it should. You know Holloway's going to get the respect. He's going to get the uh, betting action from Sharps and public bettors. I mean, he's deserved that to this point. The only thing concerning everybody, I think, that are kind of on the Holloway side is if you look back at that Dustin Poirier fight, when he made that jump up, he wasn't able to absorb that punishment quite as good in the lightweight division. I mean, Poirier is a heavy hitter. Gaethje also a heavy hitter. So that's going to be the interesting aspect. Is he going to be able to take some of that punishment? Is he able to handle those leg kicks? Because these guys can bang. But he's going to be a little bit slicker. He's going to be a little bit more technical. And he's a sniper man. And Gaethje leaves a lot of openings at times too, as we know. So for me, our producer just kind of threw in there, the under is three and a half plus money right now. And I think that's where you might want to look because I think a lot of people are expecting the durability of both guys, right? Holloway, ultra durable. You know that he's hard to finish. And then the other side of things, Gaethje's ultra durable too. But again, you have the sniper that's going to be in this fight. That's Holloway. And you have the other side of it with Gaethje has that tremendous knockout power. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a finish in this fight. I would kind of lean towards some plus money on that under. I think it's a blessing in disguise that I'm contractually prevented from betting on this stuff, man. I think I would lose money. I, not that I'm not that I'm doing all that well on Major League Baseball early, but yeah. I can yeah, see. Nick, you're good, Nick. Nick, you're making <laughs> me think too now, man. That's a good analysis. All right, we got a couple more fights I want to get into quickly on this lightweight matchup between Armand Sarukyan and Charles Dubronx Oliveira. What a tremendous fight, at least on paper. Ton of movement on the betting front. Armand Sarukyan opened up as an even money underdog. Nick, we'll start with you on this one. He's now the minus 225 betting favorite. Charlie Olives comes back at plus 185. Your thoughts? The odds makers opened him a slight underdog because they just respected the Oliveira side of things, meaning that they thought the money would flood in his way too, especially in this matchup. And they were wrong. Early on, the market took Saruk into the favorite for a good reason. He should be favored here. I personally feel like the price is a little bit too short at minus 225, whatever the case may be, the market's out there, you know, back and forth around that 200 mark. I think it's a little bit short. I understand Oliveira's a dangerous guy, so you have to respect that he can finish you on the ground. He can finish you on the feet, as we know that. But I think Sarukian matches up extremely well anywhere this fight takes place. I think he's not going to get out wrestled here on the ground. I don't think he's going to get caught up in Oliveira's submission game. And on the feet, he is the more durable fighter. So for me, I do think it's right. Sometimes it looks when you see an offline like this or something crazy, a head scratching line, it's yeah. more times right than not. And I right. think that's the case here. And we're going to see a flood of money come in on Oliveira. Henry Cejudo, what do you have for us on Charles Oliveira and Armand Sarukian? Yeah, first of all, it is super hard to, to doubt or count out a guy who has the most finishes in UFC history, a guy who has beaten a Justin Gaethje, a guy who has knocked out a Michael Chandler, a guy who has done some amazing thing in sports. But that being said, Charles Oliveira also makes a lot of mistakes. There's times where I see him, I'm just like, dude, you're such a technical fighter and you decide to fight. I'm like, that, that, that throws right, me right. off a little bit. I'm just like, dude, if right. I had your skills, I'd be technical the whole day. There's times where I do have to fight. 
but the ability that he has, I don't think sometimes he really recognizes all those crazy limbs that he has. So he decides to get into that fight. And a lot of that's just, just pretty much shoot boxing Brazilian style. But you're getting a very basic and Armin Sarukian who has great wrestling, who's already been there with Islam Makachev. He has a certain self-belief in him. And I just feel like he's just a little too basic. He needs to stay basic to fight against Charles Oliveira. So I can see... A wrestling fest, whatever it is, I have Armand Sarukian by decision. And convictedly, Henry Cejudo on the Armand Sarukian side. All right, last fight I just wanted to touch on from one Olympic gold medalist to another, Henry. Kayla Harrison, two-time Olympic judo gold medalist. She's a minus 455 betting favorite against Holly Holm as she makes her debut this weekend. Now, certainly there is the fight before the fight, and I know the MMA masses are very curious to get your thoughts on her making 136 pounds this Friday. Uh, But what are your expectations for Kayla in this division and in this promotion? And that's the biggest question there. I mean, obviously, she's in her 30s. You want to, how old is she, uh, uh, John? If I'll you, get that for you right you here in front of me. I think she's actually not. Actually, I remember when I was prepping her earlier today, and I was thinking to myself, she's not as old as I thought. I think 32. Okay, 32. 32 years young. And plus, remember when she was fighting at PFL, she was, 100, she was fighting at 155 pounds. Keep right. in mind, too, Holly Holmes has fought judokas. Holly Holmes has footwork. If you watch that fight with the Ronda Rousey, it changed a little bit. And you'll think a little bit different because why? It was movement. And not just that, but Kayla's, Kayla Harris is really good on the ground because she get it to the ground. Some of her entries into technicals are very, very suspect. And I tell you what, it's not like even though Holly Holmes is uh, is an incredible, an, an incredible boxer, she doesn't have that crazy knockout power. So you right. might be seeing her dance around and move around until eventually maybe start cutting the legs, maybe just use the movement. But the biggest thing for a girl like Kayla Harrison is could she disguise her entries? Because I'll be honest with you, John, I'm not I'm not too impressed. When she's on top, 100 percent. Dude, I wouldn't want to be on top. I, I want to want her on top of me. But that being said, you're going to have to find those tasers. You're going to have to take her down when she's on top. Our gravy. But could she get her down is my biggest question. She has acknowledged Holly Holmes IQ. Holly Holm is 42 years of age, Nick. Kayla Harrison is 33. She'll be 34 in July. To Henry's point. Holly Holmes' last bonus came for a fight of the night with Chris Cyborg in 2017. So she hasn't necessarily showcased otherworldly power inside the octagon. But I think at 42, 44, 46, she's still a difficult proposition. Any thoughts from you on uh, the prohibitively favored Kayla Harrison here against the preacher's daughter, Holly Holmes? Yeah, you have two of the best female combat sports athletes of all time going head to head here. I, I think people don't realize that because maybe Kayla is not in the UFC spotlight, but of course, home before she came to the UFC, the boxing background she has. So this is a tremendous fight, man. But make no mistake, I, I have tons of respect for Harrison. She doesn't even need this. But she didn't need to come to the UFC. She was doing just fine collecting those paychecks, running through people on BFL. Let's face it. Let's be honest here. She was doing okay there. She wanted to test herself. I have the ultimate respect for her coming over into the best organization in the world and trying to fight the best of the best and cutting the weight, all the stuff that comes along with it. Man, how could you not respect her? And Henry nailed it. If she gets a fight to the floor, I think there's a potential for a finish, an early finish. That's why you're seeing the round total right now at DraftKings around two and a half. A lot of people will think that's short because you think, oh my gosh, this has easy. It could go five rounds, whatever the case may be, you know, back and forth, you know, a a type of, uh, or the distance, I should say, um, with a back and forth type of fight. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that if Kayla gets her down, she could finish on the ground here. So it all comes down to the takedown defense of home. So for me, it's hard to lay the chalk because I respect Holly a lot. The public is going to be kind of all over this fight back and forth. I think it's going to be more of a dog or pass situation for the public. But I do think that the chalk gets it done here. And I like the Harrison side. All right, before we get on out of here, Henry Cejudo, we need Triple C's keys for a winning night for betters at UFC 300. Now, seems like you're pretty bullish on Armand Sarugyan. You like Justin Gaethje. What are your keys for these DraftKings Sportsbook betters to have a good night at UFC 300? Um, the keys? Like, what do you mean, John? <laughs> well, you could just give us a best bet or a pick to click, but what do you think people need to do when they're attacking the sports book this weekend? Like, I would suggest to fans, don't bet all 13 fights and start there, right? Try to pare it down to just a few. Resist the temptation to have 13 straight wagers. Right, right. I think the fights. I, I think I think the fights that look really appetizing to me is that with the fight that we just talked about. I think people are are really cutting out a girl, a, a, a Holly Holmes. 
You know what yes. I'm saying? She's been in the game. This is this is this is Kayla's first fight in the UFC. And the other one to me is also that Holloway fight. The Holloway fight and uh and and Gaethje, as dangerous as, as Justin is, if Holloway's a gamer too, if Holloway could push that pace and 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 not get leg kicked, his probabilities of winning actually go up. And obviously with with Zhang Wei Li, maybe you go heavy on a girl like Zhang Wei Li, a, a, a huge, a huge favorite who's very dynamic. But that being said, those are the three fights those are the three keys i know you wanted keys no, that's good. But, those the, but those are the three fights that i'm looking at that if i could bet if uncle dana would let me bet huh. Huh. well dude we appreciate you bringing your a and not your c game today nick kalikas before we let you fly on out of here of all the fights we've discussed today is there anything particularly appetizing on the board here right now well, first of all, let me just clarify the home and Harrison fight is, is three rounds, not five rounds. So it would go three round distance. That's what. So I had to correct that real quick, too. But again, most people think it would go three. Uh, you know what? Out of the fights that we discussed, there's so many intriguing matchups, man. But I think the main events, I mean, looking for that heavy, light heavyweight strap and seeing who the winner is, seeing if Jamal Hill bounces back and gets the most impressive win of his career or Panetta has been such a special fighter to this point. If he keeps that win streak rolling and then just doing accomplishing special things. So for me, it's probably the main event, such a great fight, but from top to bottom, dude, you got Garbrandt Figueredo opening the card for crying out loud. How amazing is that? I mean, let's, let's not forget. So stacked from top to bottom. I love this card. It is crazy that Henry Cejudo's good friend, the former two-time UFC flyweight champion, Davidson Figueredo, is going to fucking walk out at 3.15 in the afternoon. <laughs> I mean, that is absolutely insane. I Think actually might walk out with him, uh, John. How about it? How about it? <laughs> all right, well, DraftKings Sportsbook is your home for all the action this weekend. Don't forget, also, the point spread bets are out there as well. Total scores at the end of the fight. So that's something worth looking into as well. We got to get on out of here. That's going to do it for the 300 betting preview. It all goes down Saturday night live on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Thanks to our producer, Cody Merrill, for putting it all together. For Nick Kalikas and Henry Cejudo, I'm John Anik saying so long for now. Don't take Text and drive. We'll see you Saturday night live on paper. UFC 300 is here, and DraftKings doesn't want you to wait one more second to get in on the action. New customers take down 150 instantly in bonus bets when you bet just $5. It may have taken them countless hours to get to the octagon, but in an instant, you get Hey, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up with the promo code, and turn five bucks into 150 instantly in bonus bets. The crown is yours.